many boxes. So many boxes. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to go over with you kind of our game plan here for the STI and how we're going to make 430 wheel horsepower on the stock block and uh, try our hardest to not blow it up. So let's jump into it. So like I said, everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to do a video just explaining to you guys all of the parts that are coming up for the STI behind me and how we're going to make 430 wheel horsepower on the stock block. Now, I know I harp on reliability a lot on the channel, and this is probably the most unreliable thing I've ever done when it comes to these cars, but I don't care. I'm gonna risk it for the biscuit on this one. So, first of all, uh, I'm gonna have the same shop tune it who tuned it before, and that is going to be a surge line tuning down in Portland, Oregon. Now, a, a lot of you guys ask me, why do I go to surge line tuning? What tuners do I recommend? Anything like that. Now, mm, hold up, let me fix the lighting. Much better. Now, to answer your guys' question, the reason that I'm going to Surge Line Tuning is because I've had them tune multiple cars of mine. They've tuned my 07 STI, they've tuned the one behind me, and they've tuned a couple of my buddies' cars, and they do a great job. Chris, the tuner down there, he is so well-versed when it comes to tuning these cars. I, I trust him with the car, and I trust that he'll make some awesome decisions. So I haven't scheduled the tune yet. We're gonna wait to schedule the tune until we get all of the parts in, uh, but we're gonna go over what I already have here, what is coming, what I still need to order, all of the good stuff to be able to make this thing uh, do what we want it to do. So uh, let's just start going over what I already have and then uh, we'll go into what I have on the way and then we'll go into uh, what I need to order, what turbo we're gonna be running, what exhaust setup, the whole nine yards. So let's just start going over some boxes, boxes. See, I mean, we got, we got some Cobb goodies, we got some IAG stuff, some PRL stuff. Uh, but so far, like I said, we are going to be running ethanol in the car, which means we're going to need an ethanol sensor. So, of course, I went with the Cobb ethanol sensor. I mean, it's the best one out there that you can buy. It's incredibly plug and play for these cars, and it's going to make life a lot easier. So that's going to be super awesome. We'll do an install on all this stuff, too, when the time comes. This should be... Oh, my God, where'd it go? Oh, there it is. So this is gonna end up being our fuel pressure sensor. It's gonna be the inline fuel pressure sensor from Cobb. Also gonna be incredibly easy to install. It should install with that. Um, no problem, all plug and play. Uh, so that's two of our Cobb boxes that we've already gotten. I also got these. So if you don't know what these are, these are secondary air pump injection deletes. And I'll show you what these do in the engine bay here in a minute. Uh, but it's going to clean up the engine bay a lot and it's gonna get rid of a lot of stuff that we just don't need in the car anymore. So it'll be super awesome to get those in. These can be a little bit of a pain to install, but when we do install these, I will definitely show you guys how to do it uh, because it, it just generally saves a lot of room in the car. And then lastly, the last thing that I've got here is I'm pretty sure I've already showed you guys this. There we go. We have our IAG fuel rails already here, all the hardware form and everything like that. So get those back in there, tuck those away. So these are just some of the stuff that we have ordered and gotten so far. We also have that Perrin oil cooler that we're gonna be installing also. And I have all of the vibrant oil line, oil fittings, all the all the stuff to make it work. So we're gonna end up custom mounting that somewhere up here in the STI. So far, we have gotten a good amount of stuff in. I also have my speed density relocation uh, wiring harness coming. I got that from Viscosity Tuning just because they make a plug and play one that'll make things just so much easier in the car. Also, look how much space we have up here, you guys. Everyone asked me how I fit the car in the garage. That's how I fit the car in the garage. But anyways, the speed density wiring harness is also on the way as well as the TGV deletes. So the TGV deletes that we're gonna be running is going to be the IAG TGV deletes. That gets difficult to say after a while, Jesus. Uh, the reason I went with IAG, uh, they're pretty relatively priced considering the other ones I was looking at. I was looking at Process West and they wanted like $500 for some TGV deletes, like no. No. So the IAG ones, I think those are around $280 or so. So we have those coming. I should get those tomorrow. The speed density kit, I should get either tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. So that way we can stockpile more parts over here. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I ordered some other stuff. Pretty sure I ordered some other stuff, but I really don't remember. But we have a game plan here when it comes to what we're gonna be doing on this thing. So I have the turbo picked out. Now, a couple videos back or a lot of videos back, I don't remember what video we were talking about it in. I was talking about if I should stay stock location turbo or if I should go rotated. Now I have made the decision and we are going to be staying stock location turbo 
for a couple reasons. Now, first of all, there are some good stock location turbo out turbos out there that will make some really good horsepower on the car. So we are going with the stock location turbo. It's also gonna save me money because I don't have to rebuy intercooler piping. Uh, I don't have to refabricate anything like that. So it'll just be an easy drop, drop in turbo for it. Now the turbo we are going with is a forged performance turbo. I know a couple of you guessed it a couple videos back, but we're gonna be going with an FP green. So the FP green is capable up to, I believe around 450 wheel horsepower-ish. Uh, we're shooting for 430 on here, so that turbo should be more than capable of handling what we are going to be throwing at it. So a couple people I were talking to were like, hey, why don't you get an FP black, build for more power if you want to. Um, we're staying on the stock block right now. So even with a built block uh, in that FP green, if we threw in a built block, threw the FP green back on, it'll be more than capable of handling what I need it to, uh, especially as a streetcar on ethanol. Now, because we're running ethanol, that is why we're gonna be pushing for so much more power on the stock block. Running ethanol is going to reduce the chance of knock as well as every other reliability mod we've done on the car. It's gonna significantly reduce the chance of knock. So I'm not too worried about it. And I think the stock block will be capable of handling 430 wheel horsepower on stock internals on ethanol. So I'm not overly concerned about it, but I am interested to see what happens. And then when it comes to the header choice, the up pipe and the wastegate, we are going external wastegate. So don't even, don't, don't, don't sweat it guys. We're doing external wastegate on that one. We're gonna be using Killer Bee's four to one holy header, the equal length one, just because it will help reduce the hot spotting in cylinder number four and it will make the car a lot more reliable, especially since we're pushing for a lot more power than what the uh, stock block is gonna be capable for. Now, keep this in mind also, this is a 17 STI, so I do not have the RA short block. So I don't have the upgraded internals. I don't have the good pistons, the rods, piston rings, whole nine yards, so. It is gonna be a stretch and I am really curious to see if it blows up or not. Ideally, I am shooting to get on the dyno by like mid-May would be ideal, but like I said, these parts are not cheap and it's taken me a little while to save up for them, especially with everything that's going on in the world right now. But when it comes to up pipe, we are gonna be using Grimspeed's uh, 44 millimeter external wastegate up pipe and we are gonna be running a tile 44 millimeter wastegate. Now the reason that we're running the 44 millimeter wastegate over the 38 millimeter wastegate, I'm gonna try to shoot for lower boost. That's that's the idea and the goal here. And ideally, if I remember this correctly, I'm not 100% sure I might have this backwards. Um, I'm pretty sure a 44 millimeter wastegate is gonna be better for lower boost and a 38 millimeter wastegate is going to be better for higher boost. So uh, that, that might change depending on that. I need to verify that. So don't take that to heart. Don't quote that. Don't tell your friends that. Don't tell your mom that. But we are gonna be using the tile external wastegate. And then when it comes to the charge piping system, we're gonna be keeping the ETS from our cooler, obviously. Uh, but we are gonna be losing the bypass valve. So I am going to swap to a blow off valve on the car. We're gonna get rid of the Cobb XLE bypass valve and we're gonna go, I don't know what blow off valve I'm gonna go with quite yet. I don't know if I wanna run the HKS uh, SSQV because a lot of people run that one. So I wanna to try to find a cool blow off valve, maybe one not commonly ran. So if you guys have any suggestions on blow off valves, uh, let me know. Let me know what everyone likes. And the reason we are going blow off valve is just because we are also going speed density. Now, please know I'm not going speed density just because I want to run a blow off valve. That's not true at all. Maybe I won't even run a blow off valve. Maybe I'll just completely change the game on that one. Uh, but the reason I'm going speed density is just to give the tuner a little bit more clarity in the IAT numbers that are going on with the car. So essentially what the speed density kit is going to do is it's going to relocate the intake air temperature sensor off of the map and put it up into the intercooler piping. So it is going to give the tuner better numbers for what he's gonna see for when it comes to intake temperature just because the air will have already passed through the intercooler so that way he's getting like a good representation of what the numbers actually are instead of trying to guesstimate off of the math. So it was like 160 bucks, that's super easy to install. I already have the bung installed so I can just screw it right in so that'll be an easy one to get in there. Uh, now I do kinda wanna show you guys the engine bay real quick just to walk over a couple things. And that, I think that's pretty much it for this update of how we're gonna make 430 wheel horsepower but I'm stoked, I'm excited. So like I said earlier, we are gonna be deleting the secondary air injection pump, which is gonna be this guy right here. Now it's only needed for emissions. Now I believe, I know that it is on the older models. I believe there's a barometric pressure sensor in there that we're gonna to have to take out and relocate, but that's gonna free up a lot of room over on that backside. Now, the really annoying thing with removing these is that there's a hose on the back of the block, and then I believe the other hose is underneath the intake manifold that you have to plug, which is why you get two plug plates. So I'm not looking forward to installing that one, but the intake manifold is coming off anyways. Uh, completely just so I can get the TGV deletes in there. And then we're also gonna be swapping out this turbo inlet. Now, the reason we're also swapping out the turbo inlet is because like I said, I am deleting 
the bypass valve and the research hose. I wanna get rid of as much stuff in here as I can. I've also been contemplating swapping over to IAG's competition series, air oil separator, uh, just so I could fully delete the PCV system, but I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to do that quite yet. Uh, that might be on the next tune revision or when the engine blows up and then we go to a built block. Not not 100% sure on that one yet. Uh, but aside from that, it's gonna be awesome. It is just gonna be a slightly bigger turbo right back down here in the stock location. External wastegate's gonna come off. It'll sound gnarly, it'll be, it'll be awesome. So the car is 100% ready for more power. We just need to get all of the parts so that we can do that. We've already done all of the drivetrain stuff, all of the brake stuff, except for road because these rotors are still good. So it's ready for it. We just gotta get the rest of the parts. Uh, waiting on the last of the fueling stuff, like I said, I still need to order the turbo, the up pipe, the external wastegate, the fuel lines, a whole bunch of gaskets, the header, and I think that's it. And the, and the blow off valve for whatever blow off valve we're gonna be running. I need to save up about another 4,000-ish dollars so that way I can order all the parts. So we can start knocking this out and then uh, go get the car tuned. Now, when it comes to tuning, this tune is gonna be more expensive than any of the other ones I've done in the past. Generally, on average, you're gonna see tunes being around $400-ish, $400 $400-ish, which is pretty standard for a tune price. Uh, I think we're gonna be looking at eight or $900 for the tune because we are going to a speed density tune and an ethanol flex tune. So it's gonna be a little more expensive, so I'm gonna have to save up for the actual tune itself also, so. So that's gonna be our plan for how we're gonna make 430 wheel horsepower. The car, may, the car might make more. The horsepower is not what I'm concerned with. The amount of torque that the car will make is what I'm concerned with, because torque is what's gonna start breaking things and we don't, we don't want things to break. If it breaks, then it breaks. But I mean, if, if something breaks, I just want it to be the short block and I wanted to just throw a rod through the block if it's gonna break anything. Just don't break any of the drivetrain stuff because that's that's the stuff that's expensive and not fun to fix because, I mean, if you're gonna try to upgrade a transmission, you're looking at like $12,000 and it's just, I'm not, not trying to do that. If the block blows up, at least it's only like three grand to get a, uh, a decent built short block, so. I mean, if anything blows up, hopefully it's the block. But with that, that's really all I got for you guys in this one. I just wanted to give you guys an update on what is going on with the STI, what parts we have, what parts are in route, and what parts we still need to order, and uh, also the power goal for what we're trying to make and how we're going to achieve it. Super stoked to uh, to get an, a Forge Performance Turbo on here. It's gonna be gonna be key but anyways like i said that's all i got for you guys so if you like the video you know what to do go ahead and hit that little thumbs up and turn it blue ooh 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 and if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you want to be especially because we're going to be doing all this cool stuff to the sti coming up here soon make sure you guys are we'll put the subscribe button right up here in the corner and with that i will catch you guys in the next one peace out homies Woo!